Good Thursday to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the European Outlook today. First and foremost, the October update for winter 2024-25 forecast is now released on markoganweather.com. I do appreciate, actually, a couple of people have said that um, it's coming up as insecure, the website. I have to work on this to, to try and fix that issue. Um, so I hope that you can access this article. There is a heck of a lot of information being put into this. And unfortunately... Uh, today's video is going to be very short because I'm, I'm rushing out to work. I've just had my dinner, been working um, all afternoon pretty much to finish this post. It is now available. I will try and leave a link in the description below today's video for this update. But uh, lots discussed, lots of interesting things to look at here, so I do encourage you to check that out. In tomorrow's video, we will look at this and discuss it in more detail. So, anyway... There is a lot of things going on. We've seen more epic flooding in parts of Europe. We've seen significant rainfall across parts of the UK as well. We are seeing a change in the overall pattern. It is a very highly amplified pattern at the moment. Record cold over eastern North America. Record warmth over western portions of Europe. Temperatures today right up at 17.4 Celsius here at Marfogan Weather HQ. So a balmy mid-October day for sure. And uh, what we are going to see as we move over the next day, 24, 36 hours, is a very strengthening of the jet stream over the Atlantic. That is going to fire a couple of deep lows towards the UK. The good news is for the UK itself is that we're going to be deflected uh, to those lows are going to be deflected to the north somewhat due to uh, strong high pressure to the east. So we've got strong high pressure to the east, low pressure to the west. Uh, we've got troughs, colder air energy running all the way down into warmer subtropical areas i.e the western mediterranean we're seeing flash flooding and, and parts of uh, northern africa the mediterranean basin up into southern areas of europe we're going to see epic flooding as well as what we've seen in france in the last 24 hours we're going to see it in italy as well but this pattern is repeating itself and that's been something that i've been talking about for quite some time by the way this is the temperatures for yesterday so we have a, a slightly cooler east warmer west set up over the continent at the moment here we've got northerly winds coming down in the east we've got southerly winds coming up in the west so therefore that is the overall situation at this moment in time looking specifically at uh, the uk temperatures real quick you can see here uh, it would help if i click on uk um, instead of europe this is the current temperature, so 15s and 16s, the temperatures are slowly coming down after what has been a fairly mild afternoon across the north. We've seen yet again temperatures in the teens. I think 20, 22.5 was achieved in the London area yesterday afternoon. That's 7 Celsius above average uh, for the southeast of the UK. The average temperature is roughly 15 Celsius for this time of the year and uh, i would imagine you're talking 12 13 celsius for maximums in the north of the uk so we're a good three four five celsius above average across the north as well but let's get straight into it here i'm talking about repeating patterns i'm talking about the mjo i'm looking at the bigger picture i'm seeing how this pattern is evolving not just locally but globally have to look at the all different aspects to understand how this atmosphere is working. This is not wish casting. This is not clickbait. It is talking about fundamental theory versus reality, seeing if the theory matches the reality. And uh, obviously the big test is coming up in the next several weeks here with regards to winter ideas. But it looks as if we've got the highest Eurasian October snow cover since 2014. And uh, there's reason to believe that this could lead to a weaker polar vortex and stratospheric warming potential later down the road. So we'll, we'll look at that. The, the, the winter update does have that uh, discussed within it. But I also want to look back at a couple of interesting things. We're also talking about the first minus 30s in Russia, by the way. So this is a tweet here by Terry Goose. First minus 30 of the season in the Northern Hemisphere out with Greenland. Uh, quite early for the time of the year, perhaps there is link with the significant snow cover in Siberia. So uh, that is from Thierry. We've also got the uh, exceptional cold in parts of Iceland. Now, this is coming off the coldest summer since '98 for Iceland. Exceptionally low conditions here. You know, minus eighteen point six 
at only 384 meters above sea level. That's only 0.7 from the October national record set at the same place in 1926. He says in brackets, if I'm not wrong. And uh, that is quite an impressive level of cold. That could suggest potential later down the road. So I showed you obviously this in yesterday's video. Record cold morning across, say, the central and eastern United States. Record mild conditions over the west of Europe here. We're seeing uh, cold getting driven south into the middle latitudes over North America. We've got uh, subtropical air getting lifted north on the other side of the Atlantic Basin at the moment. Now, uh, looks as if we've got a bit of an August MJO situation. So we're literally going back to where we were with the MJO back during the middle and second half of August. The reasons why I say that is, uh, and this is again a tweet from yesterday, very much a pattern in repetition. We're pretty much back in August when it comes to the SOI, which is now rising. And we're also seeing the MJO rotate through the Indian Ocean into the maritime continent. Last time we were in phases three and four, we've seen Storm Lillian develop for the UK at the end of August. So if you look at this image here, there's Storm Lillian back on the 22nd of August. And uh, if you look at this here, look at the MJO during the month of August, which is, uh, I know it's hard to see this here, I, I do apologise, the kind of pinky colours shows the MJO during the latter half of August, we were in phases two and into three. And then if you look at this here, we're in phases four. So we're kind of in that same territory of MJO that produced Storm Lillian. And this is what is projected by the ECNWF for Sunday, UTC at 1200. And we've got a very deep area of low pressure just to the west northwest of the UK here. So it looks as if we're seeing this repeating pattern. What followed this? We had strengthening high pressure with shots of Arctic air coming down with the shift from positive to negative in the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation. So I think we are going to see in about a week to 10 days, higher pressure starting to build over the UK and Ireland. Beyond that, um, if you look at uh, the MJO, we are expecting it to go into the West and Central Pacific which then would correlate. So you can see here, this is off the GFS. It's rotating through phases four and five. Fairly amplified in nature as well. That's a fairly mild pattern. Chilly-ish for the southeastern United States, but very mild. We've got stronger gesture winds. They're starting to pull further north here. We're seeing the subtropical high lift north as that jet gets lifted north. We're lowering the heights over the Arctic region as well. So those mountains that we're poking out of the thin tropospheric layer over the Arctic region, those heights have come down. We've seen the acceleration of the mean zone of winds within the polar stratosphere. But as we start to see the pattern return to the west central Pacific with the, the upward motion of the MJO, we're likely to start to see high latitude blocking. Those mountains start to return to the stratospheric, tropospheric level here. And therefore, we may start to see those winds within the stratospheric polar vortex weaken once again. And the ECM is starting to show that. But look at this here. This is the MJO at the moment. Uh, firmly in phases 2, 3, into 4, and 5. Lots of subsidence, uh, Central and Eastern Pacific, into the Americas and the Atlantic Basin. This would uh, favour uh, a bit of a kick with the La Nina as well. Winds blowing from high pressure to low pressure. We would start to see those waters within the Nino region 3, 4 begin to cool, I think. And this is also something that I want to show you here. So this is just some ideas. Like I say, we're going to discuss this in a lot more detail coming up. So I say, with the prospects growing for another spell of strong high latitude blocking negative Arctic oscillation, could we see further frictional weakening of the stratospheric circulation during the month of November? ECMWF suggests yes. So this is the projection of the multi-model ensemble for the, the ECMWF. We're in phases four at the moment. We're expected through day five to go into five, phase five, then into phases six, which would promote blocking over UK, Ireland, Western Europe. This would be day 10. So this would take us out to um, what the end of the month. Then it is expected during uh, the day 15 through 20, 
So the dots, different different dots represent amplitude and the days. And the, the black line is the ensemble mean. So you can see it rotating through the warm phases back into the cold phases. And this would be sometime into November. The exact timing of response is a little bit subject to question at the moment. But there's that pulse of upward motion strengthening, meaning we're going to have greater amplitude and greater potential influence on the overall pattern. But you can see it now starting to move into the West Pacific and into the uh, central portion of the Pacific. And what that correlates to is a negative Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, and potentially a weaker polar stratosphere. Now, you notice here we went from record weak territory. We're going to above average, even slightly uh, towards record levels, if you notice here. So this is uh, this bottom red line shows record weak. The thick red line is average, and then the upper red line is record strong. We go from record weak to potentially record strong for a period of time, sometime towards the uh, week three end four of October. Then it goes back below that, and if you notice here, as we move towards the middle of uh, of November, we may be seeing the influence of the troposphere into the stratosphere with that MJO response and the mean zone of winds actually go slightly below average if you notice here towards the middle portions of November here but it's all speculative in terms of exactly how much response we get if we get a response we don't know anything just yet but this is all the ideas that are getting built up here on the channel and showing you what is going on here and the DWD certainly suggests some very interesting things going on with regards to the the, the mean zonal winds mean zonal winds stronger those uh, zonal winds the stronger the polar vortex the weaker those winds the weaker the polar vortex is the weaker those winds are the greater chance you release cold out of the arctic into the mean latitude uh, the middle latitude pattern so certainly the DWD is on to something here it's seeing something funny going on during the particularly December and then on into the heart of winter as well. So it's all open to question, and we will only have to uh, just kind of be patient, wait and see what happens going forward. But certainly there is a lot of things going on. Do check out that article, by the way. There's been a lot of hard work put into it in recent times, and there's a close-up view again of the uh, mean zone of winds expecting to go slightly below average, possibly in response of strong latitude, high-latitude blocking going forward so we've obviously got this uh, potential storm coming up as we move towards the weekend we've got one system that uh, moves up towards iceland during the um during the wednesday or friday time frame so tomorrow afternoon we're expecting this deep low let's have a look and see here so let's go back to the overview chart real quick because i'm running very quickly out of time here unfortunately this is the ecm ensemble Let's look at the, the G, uh, ECM and let's go to the overview chart here. So this is the here now. We've obviously got more rain moving through. We've had tremendous amounts of rain over Iberia, France, extending into Italy. So we're going to see more flooding here. We've already seen, I believe I've seen some report there from Severe Weather Europe suggesting three to 400 millimetres of rain falling within a 24-hour period over southern France. Look at this area of low pressure here. This is the problem. Colder to the north, warmer to the south. High pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. You've got a strong jet roaring across the Atlantic here. So this is the ripple effect of that Manjulian oscillation going into phases four and five here. It tends to promote more of an Atlantic-driven type pattern. But you see here, this system then crosses over southern France into Italy. Uh, big problems here. Then we've got feature number one. This is a 900 UTC tomorrow, 957 millibar low. It stays well out to the west, if you notice. But this frontal system is going to generate 50, 60 mile an hour winds over the western, exposed west of the UK mainland, parts of Ireland and Northern Ireland as well. Frontal system will bring heavy rainfall as well. Then it's this feature here that we're keeping a close eye on. It crosses from the warm to cold side of the jet stream. As it does so, you're talking a 150 to 180 mile per hour jet stream. As that system, that feature crosses the jet, enters the right rear, the right entrance, exits the left exit region of the jet then the system is going to rapidly deepen we're going to see rapid cyclogenesis once this feature
crosses into the cold side of the jet and the ECMWF model has pressure into the 950s. Then you notice here it starts to weaken as it then crosses the UK itself during the course of Sunday. But this could be a problem. 70, 80 mile per hour winds quite easily during the course of Sunday um, with this uh, system close by. And then we're left in a, a westerly regime afterwards. So that's it for today. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time with the winter update. Bye for now.